Hello, 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 everybody. I'm back. I'm um, sorry I've been gone for a month. Uh, unfortunately, I went home for the Christmas vacation for about a month. And, uh, yeah, my parents on their computer, they don't have wireless. There's no wireless nearby. I could pirate. Therefore, I had to use their computer, and they don't have a camera. And so that limits me big time. Um, I wanted to do this... Uh, it's belated, but the 2007 year in review, uh, best fights, fights of the year, fighter of the year, most improved of the year, etc. Um, I think I'm a lot different than a lot of the other guys. Uh, I'll explain it later, or I'll explain it as I come up, but let's just jump into it right now. Um, let's see, the fight of the year. Um, a lot of people are going to argue that it was the Huerta, any, uh, the Huerta Guida fight. I don't think it's that, um, mainly because that's basically Guida controlling the fight, more or less controlling the fight at a fast pace, but still controlling that fight up until that very last round where he got caught. Uh, to me, it's more of a push and pull where you're like, I don't know who won that round. I don't know who won that round. I don't know who won that round. It's where, you know, it's so close that you wouldn't be surprised if you see a draw. You wouldn't be surprised if you see a split decision, something like that. Or if it ends, you know, spectacularly at the very end after a struggle. Kind of like the Forrest Griffin, Stephen Bonner fight, you know, etc. Uh, my fight of the year is uh, Tyson Griffin and Frankie Edgar. Uh, I think this was, not only did it mean, it means a lot in the long run too. Because Tyson Griffin is going to be a lightweight to watch. Uh, not sure if he's going to be world uh, champion material. For the higher levels, but for definitely for the lower levels, if they send him down to WEC. I'm pretty sure he'll end up beating Rob McCulloch if they fought. Uh, great showing for him. You know, he he's had several fight of the year uh, candidate, and I'll get into that in a little bit in a few minutes, or in a, ugh, a few seconds. Uh, F Frankie Edgar. It was his first fight in the UFC. He came out with style. He dominated. He's shown nothing but skill for a guy I mean he's a young guy he's extremely athletic he's extremely talented and he's got a gas tank to boot he's going to be something to watch out for once again I'm not sure if he's going to be championship material but it's possible it's possible it depends on if he can elevate his game because he's still pretty small for a lightweight whereas Tyson Griffin's pretty decent size for a lightweight as well uh, honorable mention for fight of the year is Guida Griffin that was a pretty non-stop fast paced action where a lot of people believe Guida won uh Travars Griffin, which, I mean, that was the traditional wrestler versus grappler where, you know, as I said, I think a great uh, wrestler with good submission defense will always beat a great grappler. Uh, the show to here. And, of course, the Akiyama Masaki fight, that was a great fight as well. If y'all haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. I'm pretty sure you can find it on YouTube. Uh, Zufa doesn't control that fight, therefore they, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, fighter of the Year. This one I have as a tie. Uh, it would be hands down one uh, one of my fighters if he would have fought at the end of the year, but he had gotten hurt and therefore he had to pull out of the fight. So my fighters of the year is going to be a shared title of Rampage, uh, Quentin Rampage Jackson, and Jay-Z Calavacante. Uh, if y'all don't know who Jay-Z is, I highly recommend y'all look him up. The guy is spectacular. He's future champion material without a doubt. He is a future champion, and he's extremely young. He's with a great camp. I can't say anything really bad against him, except that he was about to fight my boy Aoki, and I had to pick against him because Aoki is my boy. Um, Rampage, of course, he had the fight with Chuck Liddell this year, and then he had the fight with Dan Henderson, two extremely important fights. But, uh, you know, uh, Basically, he ended Chuck Liddell's reign. Uh, I think he ended Chuck Liddell's dynasty, to be honest, because I don't see Chuck Liddell get another title shot, as I've said in a previous video. So, yeah, there you go. You got the current champion, and you got a future champion right there. Um, honorable mention is, of course, Anderson Silva, but the only reason why he didn't make the list is the guy, you know, he beat a guy that wasn't even for the title because the guy couldn't make weight in, in Luter. He beat uh, Nate Marquardt, which... It was probably his most legitimate win, and he beat a guy that he just thoroughly dominated in the first fight. Had no reason fighting him again. Uh, thoroughly dominated him in the second fight. So, I mean, if he would have fought Henderson this year or last year, I would I would give him that. I would give him it, even if he, I mean if he won beats Henderson, I'll give him fighter of the uh, fighter of the year next year just on principle because he could fight nothing but cans from now on if he beats Henderson. Uh, Clay Guida, he didn't win a lot of his fights, but he went out in spectacular fashion every fight uh, I can't think of one out I can't think of one fight that it wasn't exciting with him 
Akiyama, if he would have beat Masaki, he'd be up there right now. I mean, he only had two fights, but he, you know, a great fight against Masaki and a pretty dominating uh, knockout against Dennis Kang was pretty impressive. Uh, Frankie Edgar, of course, uh, he's had he's three and zero in the octagon right now with great showings each time, and of course so could you. Uh, he lost, of course, so he can't be fight. Well, it's possible he could have been fighter of the year, but. Uh, Two great wins. I mean, I can't th say anything bad against him outside he's just still young. And he's. I think he's a future champion as well. He's just young. He's athletic. As long as he stays healthy and he, he keeps evolving his game, he's going to be something something to look out for within another within the next three years. Uh, knockout of the year I have is Akiyama versus Kang. Uh, great fight. No. Oh. Good, good build-up to the knockout. I mean, Akiyama was pretty much using his superior footwork and stalking Kang. Kang was picking him apart with some good hands. Uh, but the moment, the moment he he stepped forward and he got Akiyama used his footwork to corner him and hit him with that uppercut. His head goes that way. His mouthpiece goes that way, and he's looking up at the ceiling. He's out in the corner. I mean picture perfect knockout by an uppercut nonetheless I mean you don't see too many knockouts by uppercut in MMA at least not by straight up uppercut usually they're doing like this the hockey uppercuts uh, honorable mention of course is Crow Cop Gonzaga I mean how can you not say that and Soko Little Nog not to mention Soko and Arona but I think Soko Little Nog more than anything else uh, most improved fighter of the year gotta go Dong Sik Yoon uh a lot of people choose George Santiago. I totally agree. I mean, the guy's done amazing this year. But we're, we're talking about improvement. We're not talking about great year. And when it comes to improvement, you, you got a guy that went 0-4 up until this year, this last year in 2007. And then he gets he goes 3-0 and against pretty good quality uh, opponents. Melvin Manhove, Zell Galasic, and uh, Fabricio Silva. I mean, that's that's an amazing little comeback after going 0-4. Those are three great wins to have. So he's got to win uh, most improved fighter of the year. But honorable mention, George Santiago, great guy, great fighter. Uh, upset of the year. A lot of people are going to argue with me here, but Sok uh, Sokaju versus uh, Little Nog. When Sokaju knocked out Little Nog in the first round, it was the first time a Nog's ever been knocked out. Uh, Sokaju was a 2 one fighter having just come off of a devastating TKO from Glover Textera, a guy that I'm pretty sure nobody knows, and if y'all do know, know who he is, then you know a little bit about mixed martial arts. I, it was amazing. I, I, it was negative like 1,600 or 800. I mean, incredible odds. If anybody bet money on that, on Sokaju, I mean, I hope Sokaju bet like 500 bucks on himself because he'd been rocking out with some money right now. Um, honorable mention, GSP Sarah. The only reason why that's not there, and I don't care what people say, people gave Sarah a snowball's chance in hell. They said if it goes to the ground, he might win. Same thing for Gonzaga Krokop. They said if it goes to the ground, he might win. Nobody said if it goes to the ground, Soko's going to win. Because, you know, Little Nog is an Olympic quality boxer. He's got the best jiu-jitsu at, you know, some of the best jiu-jitsu at his weight class. There's no way that people thought he was going to lose this fight to, to a guy that just got destroyed. And he did. And of course, the what moment? Uh, the the biggest surprise, it's not the death of pride. It's not the, at least to me, it's not the death of pride. It's not the first uh, official death in mixed martial arts. It's none of that. It is Brad Imes, a heavyweight that does not have a pedigree in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. That barely has got a pedigree in wrestling. Getting not one, but two back-to-back go-go platas. That, that it's it, it's mind-boggling when you think about it because you know you don't think Gogo Plata's I mean that's the, one of the rare, rarest moves in submission wrestling. It's extremely hard to get. True, he got it against some cans, but the fact of the matter is you don't see heavyweights submit too many people anyways, especially at their level. They you just don't see that kind of those kind of great submissions. And he got them back to back. It was amazing. Uh, I saw the pictures of it. I still didn't believe it the first time. And then when they said it did it a second time, and then I saw the video of him doing it the second time against Bo Contrell. I was just flabbergasted. So that is my what moment. Uh, so, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I'm probably going to make another uh, video in a few minutes. Uh, I got a lot of catching up to do. But uh, that's it. Uh, great to be back, guys. And leave your comments, subscribe, and all that stuff. Peace.